Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Jagos. Today we'll be doing Robbers Chapter 34, Diffrity Current, the third part. So we'll take the second point or the point B, obstacles from the physician's side. Well, the obstacles are only two. Number one, to identify the correct symptomatology and second, lack of judgment on the part of the homeopathic physician. So let us see about something about these two points. So the first point, to identify the correct symptomatology. One of the hardest problem is the patient who cannot remember the symptoms which are chronic in nature. So that is a part natural. If a person has a chronic disease, as you all know, a chronic disease, it may be for a number of years or a number of months. So if you will ask him, what were the exact symptoms when the disease started? Can you please tell me? So if the chronic disease have a very long standing, say of five years, 10 years, he will not be able to remember the symptoms which were present right in the beginning when the disease has started. Or otherwise also, if you will ask him certain questions, he may not be able to remember because a long time has passed and he cannot recap exactly what symptoms he had observed or what symptoms he was feeling within him. So that's the biggest drawback or the hardest problem wherein the patient cannot remember the symptoms because the disease is chronic in nature. Here, there is an obstacle to cure and we must probe the history on the mental, physical and emotional plane. So naturally, if the patient cannot remember, it will form an obstacle to cure. So this obstacle can be either on the mental level, on the physical level or on the emotional level. So the physician has to probe properly, try to find out what were the symptoms present on the mental level, emotion level, as well as the physical level in a given, in a given chronic case. Thus, we have to remove the obstacle as well as administer remedy in the correct potency. So therefore, whatever incomplete symptoms the patient is telling us, we have to complete it. Whatever ill-defined symptoms are there, we have to make it well-defined. Whatever symptoms are not expressed in proper words, we have to see that it is expressed in proper words. Or what symptoms are hazy, again, has to become more sharp or more focused. So in doing all this, the physician plays a very important role and he has to probe into detail slowly but surely about the symptoms so that the patient may be able to remember and he'll be able to narrate to the physician. So if we, if we get a complete symptom with characteristic symptoms or on a majority, if there are characteristic symptoms and a few common symptoms, we can definitely prescribe. So this is the hardest or the, one of the most difficult problems is to identify the correct symptom matter. So once we have identified the correct symptomatology, or once the obstacle has been removed, we found out the correct symptomatology, then we can definitely administer, or we can definitely find out the minimum, and we can give it in the correct potency. Also, we can repeat it judiciously. So by doing so, the obstacle will be removed, and in cases which are curable, the cure will take place, or in cases which are incurable, palliation will take place. Now, second point, lack of judgment on the part of the homeopathic physician. Another obstacle to cure is the ease in which the physician's judgment may be overbalanced in favor of the patient's favorite symptom. So again, whatever the patient tells you, you do not have to take it at the face value. So, you have to be your own judge. You have to have a correct judgment and see whether the patient is telling you correct or whether the patient is telling you something wrong or which is not tuning properly with the case. So as a result of which you can leave out that symptom. So 
Out here, the physician's judgment is of absolute importance. He will find out what symptoms to take and what symptoms to leave out, or which symptoms are characteristic or which symptoms are unimportant. He will be able to judge and accordingly, he will be able to take some, take up those symptoms. If you see in our organ and textbook also, in case taking, 83 to 104 aphorism, Dr. Henneman has also given us that a variety of patients, they come to us. Okay, you may get an indolent patient, again, who is very lazy, who is very set back. He may not tell you the symptoms correctly. Or you may get a patient who expresses his symptoms in vivid colors, that he is so enthusiastic that he will go on exaggerating his symptoms and he'll tell you each symptom with a different color or each symptom with a different exacerbation or exaggeration rather. So you have to identify that. Or some people may be feigning of disease. That means what? They pretend that they have the disease, but actually they are healthy. They only want to fool the physician or want to fool someone that they are not well and they come to the physician. So this, Dr. Henneman has very clearly said in his organ on textbook that different patients are there and the physician has to have his proper judgment and take what is right and leave out what is wrong. Here the patient may narrate the troublesome symptom which may reflect an entirely different remedy. It may be so that the patient may narrate in his chief complaints the symptom which is troubling him and which may naturally deflect, reflect a different, entirely different remedy. The true but less conspicuous indication that actually present does not come up in the patient's mind. So what are inconspicuous or not very important, they actually do not come up in the patient's mind. So that's all for this. It's a very short video. And one more thing also, the patient does not patient does this unconsciously by remembering the most troublesome factors and forgetting the seemingly minor items that should furnish the clue to the remedy. So the patient does this unconsciously by remembering the most troublesome factors. So it may be, may be so that whatever is troubling the patient, he only remembers that. And he may miss out certain minor symptoms which may be quite characteristic but according to him, to the, but according to the patient, it is not important. So he does not tell it to the physician. But this seemingly minor, minor symptom would definitely furnish the clue to the remedy. So whatever is troubling, is troubling the patient, that the patient will tell you. The non-important symptoms or the symptoms which he think is of non-importance, he will not tell you. But at times, it may so happen that these non-important symptoms would furnish the clue to the remedy. Thus, during case taking, the physician has to be neutral. So the physician cannot be a prejudiced observer. He has to be an unprejudiced observer, be a neutral observer, see what is right and see what is wrong with his own judgment. He should not get involved in the patient's emotions. So that's also very important that if the patient starts crying, because you've asked them some questions and as a result of which he gets very emotional and there may be an outburst of emotion in the, in the form of tears. So if, so the patient, so the physician should acknowledge that, 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 the, uh, that he also is feeling sad and that's all, okay? But he mustn't also cry along with the patient, okay? Just to be a more hilarious. So the patient should not get involved in the patient's emotions. That's very important. The physician should not get involved in the patient's emotions, but he should acknowledge it and that's it. He must observe them in an unprejudiced manner. So that's all. It's a very short video. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much.